That's the sales of vehicles in China for the second week of December is through the roof at 18.3 thousand sales. That's 15% more than expected and 35% higher than last year. Today, we're going to cover what this all means. Are we still on track for a great quarter? And where are we for the year? We've got Hans Nelson joining us, and we're going to review these numbers together. Welcome, Hans. Thanks for having me, Herbert. So this is uh, big news. I think most of us are very happy to see this. It was quite a surprise. So we've got here 18... 3,000 Teslas were insured in China last week. This is the second week of December. That's up 35% year over year. This is 15% above expectations. Beautiful photo of all the cars that are being um, probably exported at this point, but this time of the year in December for China, just all these cars out there. Uh, Roland uh, Percher at Paloli is a fantastic follow. He always is on top of all these numbers. And he's the one who kind of reported this. December 11th to 17th, China, 15% quarter over quarter uh, increase, 10% better than the best quarter, and 35.5% year over year. Third highest week ever. So this is a beautiful table that he released as well. So you can see that in a pink, that's where we're at right now. We're in the, uh, we're in the fourth quarter of 23, not yet quite finished. That's where we're at. We got uh, two weeks left to go here. And then in the red, that's the second quarter. So we're gonna try to see if we can beat the best, uh, that, uh, sorry, the second quarter of 23. And then the blue is the third quarter. And then you've got Q1 is in the yellow. And then last year was the green. So fourth quarter of last year is the green. So we are way on, way on track to absolutely just demolish what happened last year. What's your comments on this? Yeah, and I, I think it's cool to see, you know, in Q1, it w was actually above Q4 of the prior year. Um, Q2 was then the best quarter to date. Obviously, Q3, it was on track to be very good. And then we did have some downtime. But, it, you know, if you see that trend there in the blue, that even Q3 of this year was on track to be better than Q2 of last year um, until there at the very end of the quarter so that we could switch over to Highland. So now that we've got Highland up, um, we're actually, and even though we started kind of behind where Q2 was, we've been able to make up that ground and now are on track to have the best order ever. So that's really cool to see um, just consistent progress by the Tesla China team and excited to see what this ends up being, you know, at the end of the, the quarter. And so let's take a look at this. This is uh, year to date over 52 weeks uh, cumulative. So you've got the green was from last year, 2022 uh, for China. And 2023, we're on track to just demolish what happened last year. In fact, uh, Roland thinks that year over year could increase to almost 40% because the last two weeks of last year were not good. So this is going to be something that's going to surprise everybody. Just uh, look at the growth of what happened in, Tesla, in Shang Giga Shanghai and the sales of these cars in Shanghai. The growth is clearly happening in China for sure, other countries as well. Uh, well and yeah, you can see you... the uh, delivery wave unwinding there too, that you know they would have huge spikes and then flat right. spikes and then flat in 2022. And so you know part right. of that is due to delivery wave in imports versus exports. And so seeing that kind of flatten out means that I think they have their overall production system a little bit more balanced now than they have had in the past. Okay. So let's see what this all means. So let's take a look at these numbers from Troy. Um, now he publishes before uh, these numbers that released last night. It says Tesla delivery estimates for Q4. Now, this is based on what he knew as December 8th last week. His estimate is 477, um, was 482. The analyst consensus is 481. So this is before this big news. Um, this is his table. Now, his table, I know it's hard to read here, guys, but down below here, that's what we're looking at. So even then, he was still thinking we were going to hit the 1.8 million for the year. What's your estimates of what's going to happen this quarter and what will happen for the end of the year? Yeah, I just wanted to note that this table is actually reaffirmed. He put this one out on the 17th. So this is only two days old. Um, and yeah, it's still, if you add up the numbers, it, it's hard to see there, but it's like almost 140,000 um, produced of the Model Y 
or de sorry, delivered of the Model Y in China in Q4 is his estimate, and then 34,000 Model 3s uh, in Q4. Actually, sorry, I'm looking at Q3 numbers. Anyway, sorry. All that to be said, yeah, 1.8 million seems like we're on track. It's meeting the expectations that Troy had for, it seems like he was kind of expecting the delivery numbers to surprise to the upside in Q4 out of China. And um, so hopefully we do see that 1.8. Like in the grand scheme, whether we come in at 1.79 or 1.8 or 1.81, it doesn't really matter. Um, but we know that there will be a lot of noise around whatever that number ends up being if it is below you know, even if it's barely below, they'll say, oh, they missed their their targets. Um, so hopefully, you know, all that said, we do end up passing that 1.8 number because it is, you know, it's a, a big number and um, that's going to be something that helps reduce the amount of FUD that ends up coming out at the beginning of the year. Okay. And let's take a look at Gary Black's tweet. Now, this was again from last week. He hadn't yet uh, responded to this new numbers. But I thought this was interesting and useful anyways. If you look at the bottom part, it says, we expect Tesla to continue to move higher into year end as investors gain conviction. Auto gross margins have bottomed and that Tesla can achieve the fourth quarter consensus delivery estimate of 476. So with this, you know, record breaking uh, week that we just saw now, we're very likely going to break this uh, estimate, the delivery estimate of 476. Tesla's for fiscal year 2024 guidance will be unveiled at the same time. The fourth quarter earnings are reported. So, yeah, so it's like, you know, as long as we're, we're at or above what the expectations are, that's what matters. And it's looking good right now for Tesla stock. And I don't know who this person is, Darius Smolsky, but I thought it was a nice way to kind of summarize what uh, at least he was thinking. Tesla has 18.2 uh, EVs in China last week. <clears throat> Excuse me. So December, you got 82,000, November 82,000, and September, October 80, 72,000, you got, you're at 236,000 now. Yeah. You got two more weeks to go. So, and then his guess for Fremont, his guess for uh, Austin, and you've got, and he believes that we're still on target for the 1.8 million. You know, this is one person's uh, estimates. Uh, what's your thinking? Are you still believing we're going to hit the 1.8? I think so. I think we're on track. And we always see that Tesla really, you know, they pull out all the stops in the last quarter and they do push hard. And so I think that we can get there. Okay. And so one of the um, debates or people that are looking forward to, you know, to, to see is how do we increase the China numbers? Many of us were thinking that the Highland, which is, you know, the upgraded Model 3 was released, is very, very successful, just really loved. But the numbers actually aren't showing yet. So let's talk about the, the mix between a Model Y and a Model 3, upgraded Model 3 in China. This is a wonderful tweet from AJ. We've been following him quite a bit. So folks, uh, you should follow him at A-L-O-J-O-H. So he says this, okay, China insurance showed that Tesla sold last week 14.4 Model Ys and 3.9 Model 3. So that's the breakdown of the 18.3 total. And so some are wondering why the new Model 3 is not selling more units, given its refresh and more modern model. His reasoning is that Tesla's Model Y and the pricing is, the difference between the pricing of Model Y and the Model 3 is so small, people are preferring to buy the Model Y. So you only have to pay 2 to 3% more to get that Model Y. The Model Y is just the best value for money right now. This is proven by global sales numbers. Model Y is still the best seller. So in China, if you look at the prices that the uh, Model Y, like you said, it's only 2 to 3%. It's just so similar. By the time you do lease or financing on this, this thing is like nothing. So why would you get the refresh Model 3 versus the Model Y? What's going on here, Franz? Why are they not... You know, the whole point of the Highland was to create a separation finally, and yet they're just still being connected together. Well, there's so many things that could be going on here. You know, it's hard to say if they have their pricing where it's at currently because the ramp of Highland is not as fast as, you know, some people may think it is. While, you know, they've gotten to significant volumes, that doesn't necessarily mean they've gotten to the same volumes as Model Y. Um, and so they could be playing around with pricing 
just as a way to control the amount of demand that they have as they're still ramping up production on Highland. That's one possibility. You know, the other thing is that we also don't know what the split is between import and export as well. You know, it could be that they're uh, prioritizing sending some of these Highland vehicles to Europe. Um, and so there's a lot of complicated variables that are at play. I'm not entirely sure um, how much we should try and read out of just this weekly data, but it is a trend to to watch and to see how that evolves over time. But when you do think about things from a fundamental cost of goods sold perspective, one of the things that we did not see with the Highland refresh on the Model 3 was a move to structural rear castings like the Model Y has. And so that difference um, and the lack of having, you know, that structural rear casting and continuing to use damped rear, you know, body and white components, um, that does put a little bit more pressure on the Model 3 and raises the uh, like terminal cogs on that vehicle. So maybe a little bit more difficult for them to bring the price down on the, the Highland than we had originally hoped. So, you know, you kind of have a six of one, half a dozen of the other situation where they were able to do the refresh and the upgrade on the exterior and save some money in some areas and switch over very fast. Like, I mean, we were all just shocked at how fast they were able to roll out that transition from the old Model 3 to the Highland update. Um, but because it didn't take more downtime. They weren't really getting under the hood and changing some of those body and white elements as much. It also means that they weren't probably able to make as big of a positive impact on their cost of goods sold as you know we would like to see and make it more competitive with the Model Y that does have those structural rear castings. Okay, good. Well, this is obviously just... Um... Good news. <laughs> you know, we wanted to see a record-breaking breaking week. The next two weeks is going to be good as well, it looks like. Let's cross our fingers. Look, everything's looking great. Now, they are going through deflation. So it's, you know, interesting to see. Their economy is has struggling significantly. So for us to see China still succeeding like this, it's very good news for us. And the question is, what's happening in Europe and in the U.S.? And it's surprising that, you know, the interest rates haven't yet, you know, they're falling, but they're not yet fallen, really, uh, for the assets that uh, people are buying. And so, again, I'm pretty happy where we're at at this point. Almost everybody believes we're going to hit the 1.8. Um, it almost doesn't matter, really, at this point, you know, whether you're a little bit below or a little bit above. What matters is people are looking forward now to 2024. But, uh, yeah, I don't think there's going to be much of a surprise. Any other comments on this? No, I think that that, um, yeah, that's a good place to wrap it up right there. Yeah. So that's a good numbers. Let's look forward to next week as well. But it clearly was a record breaking. And it's fun to see how it differs from last year. Shanghai is kicking out of the butt. They're making it faster and quicker. And then at some point, right, we're going to see the cost, the margins improve because mm -hmm. uh, the scale is just continuing to go higher. And they're able to improve the efficiencies of the factories. Get Shanghai is kicking it. And uh, it's wonderful to see. Thank you so much, Hans. Appreciate you helping do the analysis on this. Follow him on his YouTube channel, Hansi Nelson. Thanks, everybody. I've created a website that is the most comprehensive resource for the Tesla investor. Please check it out. Simply go to my website at herbertong.com.